a couple of years ago, uh, Carrie Sword's daughter was in the art department and taking classes. And basically, to make a long short story short, they were going to have those in the art department drawing semi-nude people and said it was necessary. They objected. They tried to work through the school system, both from the Bible department and uh, through the administration to try and get this stopped. Uh, Gary, if you would, show the, the website that has been created as a result of this, and we can get you the actual web address if you would like to look at this, because one of the areas is, yes, a petition page dealing with a petition for the school to put a stop to this. Then you can see the area that says documentation. There is a lot of documentation that is available on this website. And it goes through, uh, as you can see here, a biblical response, the students' complaints, meeting with the faculty, and all of these other areas. In most of these, there are several documents that are available documenting the history of this entire situation that has been going on for a couple of years now. Since they could not get anywhere as far as putting a stop to this, they then have taken this public and thus the petition and the, this website. I'm not going to try to deal with all of that documentation. Can't do it in 30 minutes, for one thing. And I don't even have 30 minutes. That's true. And my wife said uh, the age of miracles is over with. So, uh, this <laughs> but some of the things that have been stated in relationship to this are things such as, and I'm just going to give some illustrations. Uh, that this is necessary because of it being art. And in art, you have to do these things. Well, I think anyone can draw things without having to draw nudity, or nakedness. Um, but another comment was that those that were depicted as being nude and semi-nude men and women were not Christians. It didn't involve Christians, as if that made any difference. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, the Another area in which they tried to defend it is that it was not done to incite lust on the part of other individuals. As if that becomes the standard. Uh, you know, if you make the standard whether or not it involves lust on the part of someone else, then some things that are modest will then have to be considered sinful because even dressing modestly will, some people are going to lust after that. So even though it's modest, even though it is set forth as the type of clothing God would be pleased with, it's still going to be sinful because it is, you know, someone else has lusted after it. Then there can be also the situation in which an individual is dressed immodestly, but it's all right because it didn't create lust in someone else. That is a foolish standard in reality. The standard is God's word, 
and the person being dressing in relationship to that standard, whether it causes lust on someone else or not, is beside the point. Now, yes, that lust is sinful, but that's not the standard. The standard is God's word and a person dressing according to that standard. The lust is something else to deal with. They've tried to change the subject, in other words, the make it different. Uh, On February 2nd of this year, the president of the university in a chapel speech, basically there, it was an important speech because one, he, he did not deny that this was being done. Basically, yes, they are, and it is required that they will draw semi-nude people. They said it's all right because it is art. So all of a sudden now semi-nude pictures become art and it's all right. Um, many times and those who have defended it have often said well we're not pr uh, promoting pornography. What would they have to change in order for them to be promoting pornography? Then another excuse that has been given, uh, well, the one that was given by uh, the president, David Shannon, was that Michelangelo would go in autopsies in order to look at the musculature and so he would be able to paint those pictures better. Uh, now my quick answer to that is when did Michelangelo become the standard of right and wrong? What difference does it make what he did? I thought God was the standard in the Bible. I think uh, Brother West had something to say about that last hour, didn't you? In a Facebook discussion, <laughs> I just lost my website. <laughs> there was a, I asked a question that two young men in defending uh, in a video what was taking place at Fried Hardeman. And because I don't have it now, um, it was basically no one would answer this question as to is it always wrong to see another person naked? Hmm? Is it inherently wrong? Is it inherently sinful? to see another person naked? Yes or no? And uh, I don't know of anyone who would say it is inherently sinful to see another person naked. A husband and wife are going to see each other naked. There's nothing sinful in relationship to that. One thing they would not respond to and I started this in a Facebook group that one of them was a member of. Does seeing another person naked in one setting justify seeing them in any setting? To be consistent, they have to say yes. But of course, the answer is no. There are occasions in which it is not sinful, but that does not justify every occasion. What they tried to do was to present a strong disjunction from a logical standpoint that it is either this or it is that. It is either inherently sinful 
all the time or it is never inherently sinful. That's not the case though, it's a false disjunction. It can be justified in one area and sinful in another area. What they have to prove would be that it, it simply because it is justified in this area means that it is justified in this area. The question that many times the school and these who try to justify it are saying that because it is art that that justifies it. It is justified because it is in the area of art. Another excuse that the school has used is the aspect of accreditation. That they have, in order to be accredited and in order to, to have these types of degrees, that this is something that must be done. Uh, as if, again, that justifies it. All that is is situation ethics. That the situation supposedly justifies sin. So that's pretty much in a very brief nutshell as to what has taken place. I probably have omitted some things that need to be added. Uh, but it at least gives you a viewpoint as to what is taking place. Um, they tried, one of the things that was challenged is that during the lectureship, since the school is defending these pictures, to show the pictures during the lectureship. Well, you can imagine how that went over. No way. There were some individuals who sent some of the pictures that are in the textbooks to individuals on the faculty and the board. They were accused of sending pornography. <laughs> Apparently some of you see the problem with that. Supposedly it's not pornography, but now then it is if it's sent to the board members. Um, but it shows you the the ridiculousness of some of these individuals who are defending the school. On, on the matter of pornography, uh, of the pictures that they were talking about, they were in their actual textbook. And because it was in a textbook, then as Michael as well presented, then that's all right. So I had somebody write me who act black, and they may have not known, but I have learned over the years, I don't trust very many people unless I have reason to trust them. And uh, I think laying hands suddenly on no man has a lesson in there. Improving all things, holding fast that which is good, takes some time <laughs> sometimes. So the person said, would you send me the pictures that they are concerned about? Well, I didn't have them. I haven't even seen them. So I wrote them back and said, if I had them and I sent them to you, then you could accuse me of sending you pornography. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out more about this, the textbooks are there that the school bought. And you can go to this website, Brother Soar's website, and you can find out from him just where to get them. But you know, sometimes the Lord knew what he was talking about tongue-in-cheek when he says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves I know not who these people are that are on the internet and you know Facebook is just full of every kind of nut and fruit there is on the face of the earth and usually they've always got something to say and there's always somebody to listen so I'm not about, and I urge you to do the same thing, be careful if somebody asks you about this. You don't know why they're asking that. You don't know what they're going to do, and you don't know what they've already got planned that they're going to do if you react a certain way. 
So I wanted to throw that in in the process of just how things work. Uh, you know, we could publish it, Contending for Faith, and Defender. And I imagine what Fried Hardwood would say if we did that. I will add this. Not all of them were in the textbooks. They were also going to have live models. One of the live models was in a sports bra and I think a uh, pant or short shorts. Uh, so it was also drawing live models. It wasn't in the preachers looked like that. I guarantee you that would have been Frankenstein's <laughs> 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 Yeah, I wouldn't want to see any of them uh, that. <laughs> But uh, it was also it was that aspect as well. So it wasn't simply some of the pictures. Some uh, individuals in the discussions have went went and got simply the titles of the uh, photographs or pictures and posted the titles of. Them. And the titles themselves are pornographic. Don't even have to look at the pictures. The titles express it. So now then, anyone want to make additional comments or questions or anything else? Come on if you're ready, but as you come, if you want to come, I want you to think about this. I mentioned to some of you earlier. David, King David, is an artist. We know he was uh, talented in the area of, of uh, music, writing, poetry. So he's in stroll on top of his house with his sketchbook. He looks over here and he sees Bathsheba taking a bath. Everything would have been all right if he just started sketching her. Now that's what, you reduce it right down to where it is. That's exactly what is being said by our highly educated people influencing 18, 19, 20, 21 year old minds. And that's what we're supposed to have happen. One other thing, this reminds me so much, some of you will remember this. What was it, about 1988 when you had the ordeal out at ACU over the teaching of evolution? And what's going to happen in all this before it's over and done with, and I've predicted it some time ago because it's nothing to predict. They're going to circle their wagons, and they're going to constrict those wagons, and they're going to tell all people like me and others who protest that, carry sword and so forth, and they're going to say these are a bunch of knotheads and knuckleheads and sour pussies and everything else. And they're going to say then, but we'll keep on teaching the truth. You can trust your boys and girls to us. And as their motto that Fried Hardeman says, which is a good motto, teaching how to live and how to make a living. Well, I don't want that kind of thing taught. There's no way under the face of the earth you can take the authority of the Bible and uphold this kind of stuff right here. Brother Dub, over here if you want to go. While he's coming and Brother Douglas uh, as well. Here's the argument that was actually made by, uh, these are two young preachers, and I mentioned it. Is it inherently sinful to see a human naked? If yes, you're faced with the absurdity of your affirmation, anyone who sees a naked human is in sin. If no, you're faced with the fact that someone viewing a textbook with nude pictures is an issue of judgment and not sinful regardless of school or scholastic discipline. That's supposedly a preacher who presents himself to be conservative. Dub McClish Dutton, Texas, incidentally that preacher is an MSOP grad, is if you're thinking about the same one I am. Well, what's his name? Tony uh, Brewer. Tony Brewer. Brewer. Tony Brewer, yeah. I'm no kin to <laughs> <laughs> actually Jerry's grandson. <laughs> so, uh, two or three things I want to say. Number one, I am a graduate of Freed Hardeman College. 
and there are uh, at least two others here. Uh, John, what's your name? Harold. Maybe another. Fried Yeah, Danny. Yeah, yeah, Danny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Wayne. So, uh, a few of us here have been on the campus quite a bit. As I was telling someone earlier, um, going back four generations between my wife's side of our family and, and our own children and grandchildren, we've had 34 of our family attend Freed Hardeman College over the past, well, since 1952. So I have a lot of personal concerns about Freed Hardman. I have for years. Forty years ago, I began pointing out tendencies that were taking place at Freed Hardman. It began with lectureship speakers. You remember, Harold? 1977. Yes. And, um, Things have not gotten better. <clears throat> so the point in saying that is this is not something suddenly that Fried Hardeman <laughs> uh, has uh, moved in the wrong direction concerning. These trends have been moving. This maybe is the most blatant thing that many others could recognize. Uh, the general populace out there does not know the convictions of many of the speakers that many of us know of that they have continued year after year to invite to speak on the lectureship. And if you want to know where a school is going and what it does and does not tolerate doctrinally, just look at the lectureship schedule every week, every year, and mm -hmm. it will tell you better than any other thing, I think. And so we've seen this building, and, but, but now it's come into the realm of moral issues, not just doctrinal issues. And who would have ever thought that any of our brethren who have declared their allegiance to Jesus Christ would defend showing nude pictures and trying to justify it in a so-called Christian institution, one that is dedicated to training young men and young women to be more faithful, stronger in the faith, more dedicated to Christ, uh, purer in their lives, and then see this happen. The fact of the matter is, if you read the Fried Hardeman Student Handbook, they are in violation of their own handbook in doing this. Mm -hmm. Some of those who have made comments on the petition list and at other times have been those who have gotten degrees in art and photography from state institutions where they were not required to do this to get their degrees. So that excuse is a non-excuse. And if I recall, uh, Michael, you said a moment ago that uh, one of the um, defenses they were making was that it was not their intent to yeah. sterilize. It doesn't matter what their intent is. Intent has nothing to do with it. Whether nude pictures stir lust in one or not, Jesus still said, if a man lusteth after a woman in his heart, he's committed adultery with her already in his heart. And the evidence is that when nudity is presented, emotions are stirred that would not otherwise be there if there was full clothing. Mm -hmm. Why did Noah and his two sons take a blanket or sheet and back backward to cover their father when he was naked in his drunkenness? They had some modesty that our brethren at Freed Hardeman do not have, apparently. So um, we're dealing with something here, brethren, that's institution-wide. I don't mean Freed Hardeman institution. I mean educational institutions operated by our brethren. 
it's sort of like the medical profession or the legal profession. The lawyers don't criticize the lawyers and the doctors don't criticize the doctors. The schools don't criticize the schools. And it is just as David said a moment ago with the ACC or ACU, I'm a graduate of that place too, what they did with the evolution thing. They first deny, then they defend, and then they define. And that's what we're already seeing with this right here. But I hope that Kerry Sword and the other brethren who have taken the leadership in this because they had personal investments. They had kids in those classes. Kerry did. This is what started the ball rolling. I hope that they will not relent in their pressure. I hope that Fried Hardeman loses thousands of dollars and hundreds of supporters otherwise until they wake up and smell the roses. They are in violation of the word of God and they need to be held to account for it. Let me mention this. If it is the case, and I, I really don't think it, it will be at this point, but if it is the case that Fried Hardeman takes care of this in a proper way, don't kid yourself into thinking that everything is going to be all right with Fried Hardeman University. It's not. This is a symptom of a deeper problem that in order to really take care of, you're going to have to get rid of just about the entire faculty and board. Well, it starts at the top. That's <laughs> where it should. Yeah. Uh, couple of other comments real quick and then brother Danny uh, he, David Shannon in his comments to the students in that chapel speech on February 2nd basically stated that if you are in those classes and you have a problem with it to see your advisors and they would consider changing and altering things for that in for that particular student didn't say that they would, they would only consider it. Another aspect is, I think a lot of times we use, you know, we are to dress modestly. True. What is that? Maybe it would be better if we started defining and using the Lord's term. What is nakedness as defined by God? When you define nakedness and being naked according to God's word then don't have to worry about a discussion as to this or that or whatever it might be now then what is nakedness according to God's word when you start uncovering from the shoulders to the knees now we don't have time to go through and establish all of that but study the scriptures regarding nakedness now if they are posing in ways and showing pictures that would be classified by God as nakedness, then they are sinful. It's simple as that. Brother Danny. Danny Douglas of the Central Church of Christ, Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. Uh, one thing about the nakedness is there was a live student model in the class. This was not an assignment, but a student came in the class, a girl that was dressed in a very lascivious, immodest manner. Most of her body was naked. She was covered in various parts. But the teacher Although she did not, he or she did not require it, I think it was a lady teacher, she did accept the girl coming in there and modeling before the students. Now, I know pornography and on the page is wrong, but this was a live female model in the class. Now, that's horrible as well as the rest of it. And the only other thing I want to say is this lectureship is about Christ 
And one of the things that we're looking at is He's the light of the world. Now, with Jesus Christ, the light of the world, approve of this influence, I want to read Ephesians 5, verse 3 to 5. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, that is fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And then, verse 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. That's all I have to say. It would be impossible for the showing of nakedness in an artistic way to be walking in the light. Now, it's simple as that. And yet, sadly, it's being defended by members of the Lord's Church. And some of them even parading themselves as being conservative. They have lost any right to be called a gospel preacher because they are no longer a gospel preacher. They are promoters of wickedness and sin. Jerry, you want, look like you're just dying to say something up here. If you two minutes. Well, well this, here's part of the tangled web. <laughs> Jerry Brewer from Elk City, Oklahoma. Jerry Brewer from Elk City, Oklahoma. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, here's part of this. Uh, if I remember, I think Michael wrote a, or maybe it was Dub, wrote an article a few years ago on the tangled web, web of fellowship. Uh, this. Uh, it's on my website. Okay. Well, this fella, th this uh, fella who feigns uh, being a conservative preacher, his name is Tony Brewer. He is a Memphis School of Preaching graduate. He is also a teacher in the Online Academy of Biblical Studies. So that needs to be. Yes. One minute, Doug. Please. I'm still Doug McClish from Denton, Texas. Um, if you want to read a catalog of things from about 1977, through about 2004 regarding Freed Hardeman University. I have a manuscript on my website. The title of the manuscript, and it was an assignment for this lectureship, what uh, Christian parents should expect from uh, higher Christian education, words to that effect. And I have about 10 pages of material, single space, detailing things at Fried Hardeman University since 1977 through about 2005. And I wrote these things to a member of the board at Fried Hardeman. At his request, by the way, because I had mentioned Fried Hardeman, uh, along with other religious or uh, educational institutions, in comments in the Gospel Journal, without going into any detail, just expressing concerns. And so he wanted to know what those concerns were. And so I, I wrote him. And I did not hear back from him. But if you want to see a catalog of the things that had gotten my attention by that time, uh, you'll find it there. The Scripture Cash, all one word, dot com. Thank you. I'll also mention that uh, a few years ago, um, I believe in the, the Bellevue Lectureship book, The Blight of Liberalism. Uh, John wrote, John West wrote a chapter dealing with Christian schools and liberalism. And he had to quit researching and studying so that he could get the manuscript into me months late. <laughs> 
he kept getting more and more material. But uh, I would also recommend that chapter as well. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it very much. Um, closing comments. Where in the world is the Bible faculty who purport to be gospel preachers concerning Freed Hartman University? Sit there. Sir, yeah. Hmm. So what, what does that say? Dummies oysters. What's, what are the preacher training schools doing? Why haven't they spoken up on this? Worldliness is influencing us far more than even those of us who think we're on the firing line realize. It's there. And if you go talk to the students at these universities, you'll find out that when the president of FHU made these statements back earlier this month, there was a host of rousing cheers from the students regarding the position that Fried Hardeman had taken. Well, you can't expect a bunch of kids sometimes who come out of liberal uh, homes and congregations to back up much of anything that says you do only what the New Testament authorizes and here's how it authorizes and you must learn this and live by it. It's just, uh, that's right, they never heard it. And uh, that's where we are. And if you think it's not that way, then it's your right to do so. But it is that way. And someday, regarding John's sermon, everyone's going to stand before Jesus Christ, the light of the rightly divided Bible, and give an account for these actions and everything else they've done. Because, you see, they're really doing this, or claiming to, in the name of Christ. Now imagine how he's taking this. Yes. Amen. And we heard today also in that sermon regarding the judgment, the books will be opened. That means there is a record kept of everything we think, say, and do. And if, ever, if we must give account of every idle word, then what about this? Now that's good for every one of us to be mindful of as to what we do. We thank you for hanging out and staying here a little longer. We're sorry we have to deal with this kind of thing. And by the way, for everybody who will hear this or are seeing it right now, we've tried to be factual. And don't approach us without showing us evidence yes. that's adequate to say that we are wrong in what's been said here this afternoon. If we are wrong regarding the facts, we'll be more than happy to correct them. We always have been. We always will be. Some of us remember the old days at Freed Harbor, where even the faculty members would rise up and raise issues, especially in the open forum. And I can just imagine what Brother Woods, Brother G.K. Wallace, Brother Gus Nichols, and all those men would have said regarding this. Uh, I, Franklin Camp, I can just see you right now. Girl, like that, but I'd love to hear. Really, the one I'd love to hear would be Brother G.K. Wallace. An article I have written, the Gospel Advocate of his, really saying you have to watch out about all this business of being accredited. I'm trying to run that article. As you know, I have a little bit to do with the paper and special issues being prepared right now, in which some of these things, which this afternoon, are going to show up again. 